so, 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 so good. Yo, what up guys? It's your boy BP Ham, and we're back to cook another Vietnamese classic recipe called Sung Ka, which is a caramelized pork rib that my parents taught me how to make. Mama Fam and Papa Fam's secret recipe, which is super delicious and easy to make. It's really simple, and I used to eat this growing up all the time. So I'm really excited to show you guys how to make this. So let's get cooking. So for this recipe, you're gonna need some spare pork ribs, soy sauce, nook mum or fish sauce, granulated chicken powder, olive oil, sugar, kosher salt for cooking, and regular iodized salt for washing the pork, garlic powder, pepper, shallot, some garlic, a few green onion, and last but not least, some Coco Rico coconut soda. This is a special ingredient used in a lot of Vietnamese cooking, so this is what's gonna make it sweet and delicious. Oh, I forgot about the oyster sauce. So you're also gonna need some oyster sauce. The main ingredient in this recipe are these pork spare ribs. They come in these long strands. They're like one inch slice of a huge pork rib. They just slice it down the bone. And then you can ask your butcher to chop them up into these smaller pieces. But if not, it's super easy to come home and just cut between the bones and then you'll get little bite-sized pieces like this. You see the bones running through there, and there's just these small pieces. So one thing we do is wash the pork. So we're just gonna run this under cold running water, throw some iodized salt in there with it, and rub it around a little bit so that we can get all those bone fragments and the not so pleasant part of the pork out. Pro tip, we are gonna put on a glove. We all have excess gloves at our house anyways now, don't we? So we're just gonna get some salt, put it in there, and then run it under some cold running water, and just kind of, Massage it out, and as you can see, all that blood and bone fragments are coming out. And we're just gonna do this a couple times. And make sure when you're washing pork that your sink is clean, there's no other dishes in here because it can contaminate. So you kinda wanna wash this until the water is clear. As you can see, the water's a lot clearer and I think we're good to go here. So I just drain that out. Shake off the excess water. So just remember anytime you're using pork to wash your hands. If you got time, you can let this air dry, but we ain't got that kind of time right now. So you can grab some paper towels and just blot away the excess water. So now that we've finished washing and drying the pork, we're gonna put it in a quick marinade. One teaspoon of garlic powder. One teaspoon of salt. One teaspoon of chicken powder. If you don't have this, you don't have to use it. It just adds a little extra flavor. And last but not least, we're gonna use one teaspoon of oyster sauce. Use your hands or get a glove. And we're just going to, gonna mix this together. Get that marinade all around. It already smells really good. And if you want, you know, this is up to your taste. You want a little more oyster sauce, a little more salty, however you like it, really, uh, you can modify this to what you like. Now that we got this mixed up, we're gonna leave it aside for about 15 minutes. You can do longer, but if it's longer than 30 minutes, I'd put it back in the fridge. And then wash your hands. Next, we gotta add some aromatics, uh, which is some shallot and some garlic. We're gonna use about two tablespoons of shallot and one tablespoon of garlic, which is about two to three uh, garlic cloves. But if it's a little more, a little less, it's not gonna make a big difference. And I love garlic anyway, so whatever your preference is, really. Like these measurements, it's really up to your taste. This is just what I like. We're just gonna dice this garlic. What I do is just smash it behind my knife and it's okay if it gets a little smushed up because we're gonna dice it anyway and then the skin just comes right off oh and then when you smash garlic the smell is just so i love the smell of garlic and i probably use too much but that's what i like and you can cut the ends off you don't have to it doesn't make a huge difference but i'll just do that for the purposes of you guys because you're special you're just going to take your knife and chop through it and then turn it chop it and I just do like a rough chop here because I'll run my knife through it and just go through it a couple times like this. So we got that roughly diced. We're going to set it aside. And then we're gonna use about a half shallot here. This is probably a little more than two tablespoons, but it's fine. Um, we're not gonna waste it. So cut the ends off. You could be fancy and do the whole like chopping and doing like that, but. <coughs> I ain't got time for that. I'm just gonna peel off the outer layer and then 
just chop it down. Again, a rough dice. I'm to get it to those more finer pieces. And it's really okay if there's like one piece that's too big or one piece that's too small. Like, you don't gotta be crazy. And as I said, this is a little more than two tablespoons, but it's fine. It's gonna be even more flavorful and delicious. So that's all the chopping and cutting for this recipe. We're gonna head over to the stove to start making the caramel. I lied. We gotta do the green onions. So one of them is just gonna be for garnish. So we're just gonna quickly chop the end of that off. Um, quarter it up and then just do slices, small slices. And this is just for garnish. And set that aside. And then you're gonna wanna take two or three stalks and just cut them into about two inch pieces. This is gonna go with the pork in the last like 30 seconds that we cooked them. And these bigger pieces, a lot of people don't use the white parts, but it's really flavorful. So I just cut them in half because they are a little thicker and um, take a little longer to cook than the white part. So we're gonna set these aside and then we're gonna start working on the caramel. So I'd say the hardest part about this recipe is making the caramel that we're gonna use in the pork. So it's actually pretty simple and as long as you're watching the pan, nothing should go terribly wrong. And with this darker the caramel, almost to the burnt stage, will still be okay when you um, cook it with the rest of the dish. So you're gonna wanna use a light colored pan. You usually wanna use one smaller than this for this um, amount of caramel but I don't got that so you're gonna use a light colored pan so you can see the color of the caramel as you're cooking it so don't turn on the fire yet we're gonna add in a tablespoon and a half of sugar and just spread that out at the bottom of the pan so that it cooks evenly and then we're just gonna give it a quick start with some water I always keep a water in like this little bottle in case I need it for cooking so we're just gonna squirt in like one teaspoon of water in there. And then we're gonna turn on the fire to medium and let this kind of cook. Don't really mess with it. You don't wanna stir it because it'll um, kind of seize up, but you can at this point, like kind of move the pot around like this as the caramel begins to form. Before the caramel starts to caramelize, I have a cup of water here measured out so that I can stop the cooking once it gets to the color that I want it to get to. So it's already starting to bubble because this pan is so wide, but if you have a smaller one, it'll be a little easier. So I just kind of help it along and swirl the pot around so I can get, you know, all the sugars melted evenly. We're just gonna let that go because this pot is so big, it's gonna happen really fast and probably not the way you wanna do it. So if you have a smaller pot, that's gonna be better. But when you're cooking caramel, you don't wanna step away from the pot because it really turns from amber to burnt really quickly. So just keep watch over it. You wanna use a heavy pot in pan as well. As you can see, this one is not that heavy. Um, you can see it's already turning here. I'm just kind of collecting it because the pan is so small. It's already kind of turning color. Once it gets this color, it's going to happen really fast, especially with this a little amount. If you can't see the color, just kind of swirl it around. We're already very close to where we want to be. Turn the heat off. Here's the color that I want. It's a dark amber. And be really careful when you're putting in the water to stop the cooking because it may splatter. So you can see it's a nice dark color and this is what's gonna caramelize the pork when we're cooking it. Arguably the most important part of this recipe is this Coco Rico coconut soda which you can find in almost any Vietnamese grocery store or even Hispanic grocery store. It usually comes in cans and for this amount of pork you would use about half a can but they didn't have that around here so I got this bottle and we're gonna use about six ounces which is equal to half a can. Oh! <laughs> Make sure it doesn't explode. This is probably not how you should be measuring, but I think that's about six ounces. If you can't find this Coco Rico soda, you can use coconut water, but it's not gonna be as good. It'll still be good, but this just gives it a really nice, sweet taste that you can't really replicate. All right, so now we can actually start the cooking process. We're gonna turn this pot. We're gonna get a pot about this size and Turn it on to medium heat. We're gonna add in a few tablespoons of olive oil. Let that heat up a bit, chillax. The oil is now heated. We're gonna add our shallots and garlic and saute them for about 30 seconds to a minute. We don't want them to burn just to get a little uh, flavor out. Oh. And that smell is just so good once it hits the pan. I might add a little bit more oil 
Um, just kind of gauge it if your garlic and shallots are burning. So it's been about a minute. We're gonna get our pork, turn this up to medium high heat, get the pork, and we're just gonna stick it right in there. We're gonna cook this up until, you know, it's all kind of cooked on every side of the pork until it's like a kind of grayish color. It doesn't need to be like seared, but just to get it to cook a little bit. Mix it around, get those shallots mixed up with the pork. Just let it cook. This is gonna take about three to five minutes. Oh, with the smell already with that garlic and the shallot and the oyster sauce kind of hitting you. Oh, it smells so good. Woo! Oh, oh! Pork overboard! Pork overboard! And I think we're getting pretty good. Gonna let this go for probably 30 more seconds. And now we're gonna add in the rest of the ingredients. To this, we're gonna add in that caramel mixture. And then you're gonna add in that Coco Rico soda. And mix it up. And from here, you're going to want to make sure that the pork is covered. So you're just gonna add water until it's just covering the pork. <laughs> so I added about half a cup of water just so it was barely covering the pork. And then we're gonna cook this on medium high until all that water kind of cooks out and it caramelizes in there and all the flavors kind of melt together. It's gonna to get a little sticky and be really, really delicious. As you can see, I added water to cover the pork. As you're cooking this, the pork is gonna release some excess fat and things that you're going to want to scoop off with a ladle so that you have a really clean and clear broth. So you're just gonna scoop it out like so and put it into like another container that you're gonna throw out later. So as I was saying, you see that this stuff that is being released by the pork, you just want that out so you get like this clear color over here. And it's really hot, so kind of be careful with your hands. This is probably my least favorite part because my hand gets hot, but you know, a clean broth makes a really delicious dish at the end. So it's well worth it. And when my parents do it, my mom does it, she's just like, here I'm like, ah. And then to this, uh, we're going to add in one tablespoon of fish sauce that I keep in one of these because I use this a lot. It's gonna add in one tablespoon into there. Mix that in. So as this is cooking and the pork cooks through, you can kind of taste the broth to see if you want it a little sweeter, add some sugar or more salty, add some more fish sauce or salt to make it to your liking. For it to reduce, it should take about 20 to 25 minutes. You want it to reduce by about half, unless you like a really glazy sauce and you can reduce it even lower, but I like it to about half so you can have some of that sauce to scoop on your rice and it's so, 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 so good. And just a quick tip while we are waiting for this to reduce, my favorite fish sauce to use is called Viet Hung and it is the three crabs version. A lot of times people don't even notice there are different seafood, uh, there's three crabs here and there are different types. A lot of people, um, I asked my roommates to buy the three crab version, don't even know and they see like a lobster and two crabs um, here. But the three crab version has the deepest, best flavor, at least to my family's taste. And that's the one I would recommend you guys get if you are at the Asian grocery store. Here's a close up of the three crabs Viet Hung Nuk Mum fish sauce. And a lot of people are kind of turned off by fish sauce because of its strong pungent smell, but once you kind of cook it down and put it in, it gives this really deep umami flavor that you can't replicate with other ingredients. So I recommend, you know, you know, just try it out. If you don't like it, then, you know, you don't like it, but at least try it out before you knock it. Now that we've ladled out all of this scrap, that we have a really nice clear broth that's really gonna reduce into a really delicious sauce. As it evaporates, it gets darker and caramelizes with the pork. It looks delicious. We're probably gonna let this go for another five minutes and it should be ready. Uh, one thing I do wanna say is that when you do taste the broth initially and it's not salty enough, be wary of adding too much extra salt because once it concentrates down, it gets saltier. Don't add too much salt at the beginning. You can always add salt at the end. We're just about done. Um, we're gonna turn this to low and for the last 30 seconds, we want to add in uh, the green onion and then crack in some black pepper. So those green onions we cut before, add those in. Crack in some black pepper. Gonna cook this for a good 
30 seconds, let that green onion wilt a little bit. Look at that, it looks so good. We're good here, we're gonna turn off the heat and we're done. So now we're just gonna plate it up. And if you're trying to impress some friends, you know, just clean up your plate a little bit so it doesn't look like you're a mess, which I am, so I don't know who I'm faking. And then we're just gonna finish it off with some of that green onion garnish that we cut up before. And that's it. So I'm called caramelized pork ribs. So how do you eat it? You're gonna grab a bowl of rice and then you're just gonna scoop on some of the pork ribs. And then this sauce at the bottom, you just wanna gather some and just drizzle it over your rice because it's uh, delicious. Ooh. Now we're gonna taste it. To eat it, you're just gonna grab the bone. You're just gonna bite around it. This cartilage kind of will come off. Mmm. It's so flavorful, so good, so simple. So this amount will make enough for about four people, but it's pretty simple to make. You can just double it and um, cook it in that same pot and you'll have enough for you know the next days because it is that good. But thank you guys for watching and we'll see you next time. Peace.